This is the final lesson in the counter strain section. And in this lesson, we'll be continuing our conversation about counter strain tender points by focusing on the pelvic slash sacral region. Let's start by focusing on the anterior side. Our first tender point is the psoas tender point, And it is located two thirds of the way from the ASIS, that's the anterior superior iliac spine, to the midline. And when you see the word midline, that just refers to where the vertebrae are. Now the treatment position for the psoas tender point is flexion side bending towards, and you see that FST, flexion side bend towards. And specifically, you're using the hips when you do this treatment. And that's why I included hips in parentheses. Now, as you can see on our diagram here, the psoas tender point is located two thirds of the way from roughly where the ASIS is out laterally toward the midline where the vertebrae are. Our next tender point is the iliacus. The iliacus tender point is located one third of the way from the anterior superior iliac spine to the midline where the vertebrae are. The treatment position for the iliacus tender point is flexion, abduction, external rotation, also known as the frog position. So that's F-A-B-E-R. And if you see an image of this on Comlex, it's gonna look like the person is being put into a position such that their legs kind of look like frog legs. And that's why I put frog position in parentheses here. If we go back to our diagram, you'll notice that the iliacus tender point illustrated here in blue is again located one third of the way between the ASIS and the midline along the belly of that iliacus muscle. Okay, so some of these tender points are named simply for the muscle belly in which they exist. So that's another way to remember where they're located. Our next anterior pelvic slash sacral tender point is the low ilium tender point. And this is located roughly two inches superior laterally to the pubic symphysis. The treatment position for the low ilium tender point is going to be pure flexion. So we look at our diagram and we move superior lateral to the pubic symphysis, about two inches superior lateral, shown in green, is the low ilium tender point. Our next tender point is the pectineus tender point. Now, you may see this referred to on exams as the inguinal tender point, but those terms are going to be used interchangeably, so I'll include them both for your studying pleasure. The location of the pectineus tender point, it's located on the medial aspect of the inguinal ligament right around the pubic tubercle. So if you go back to your anatomy and you know your landmarks in the pelvic, sacral, and even the femoral area, recall that you have a pubic tubercle and right on the medial aspect of where the inguinal ligament kind of inserts near that pubic tubercle, that's where this tender point is located. The treatment position for this tender point is going to be flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. So F-A-D-I-R. If we go back to our diagram, you can see the pectineus tender point or the inguinal tender point, same thing, shown here in orange. Again, it's located on the medial aspect of where that inguinal ligament is coming down near the pubic tubercle. Our final anterior pelvic or sacral tender point is the low ilium flare-out. Now I want to pause for a second and direct your attention to the slide. As you can see, there's two tender points that have a very similar name. There's the low ilium tender point, which we already talked about a few slides back. And now we have a low ilium flare out. So literally the same name with the phrase flare out at the end. And these represent two distinct tender points in somewhat of the same region. So don't get confused here. The low ilium flare out is located on the descending ramus of the pubic bone, right? And that's obviously pretty distinct from two inches superior lateral to the pubic symphysis. Although they're in the same general region, they have distinct locations and they're distinct tender points. So don't confuse low ilium versus low ilium flare out. Low ilium flare out is treated with flexion, abduction and external rotation. So the same kind of positioning that we talked about for the iliacus. If we go to our diagram, you can see that the low ilium flare out shown here in pink is again located on that descending ramus of the pubic bone. So this is below where the low ilium is located. So flare out is lower than the low ilium. Okay, that's it for the anterior pelvic and sacral tender points. Let's switch gears and talk about posterior pelvic and sacral tender points. The first big one is the piriformis. The piriformis tender point is located obviously on the belly of the piriformis muscle halfway between the ILA and the greater trochanter. 
Treatment position here is going to be flexion, abduction, and external rotation. And this is sometimes referred to as the peeing dog position. And if you ever see an image of this on Comlex, when someone's being treated for the piriformis tender point, their leg kind of assumes the position that a dog would take if it raised up its leg, abducted it, and tried to urinate on your front lawn. So that's the piriformis tender point. Let's look at where that's actually located. So here is a crude drawing of the posterior view of the pelvic slash sacral area, as well as the femoral area. And in the pink, you see a very crude depiction of the piriformis muscle. And in the belly of that piriformis muscle, roughly halfway between the ILA and the greater trochanter of the femur, that's where the piriformis tender point is located. The next tender point is upper pole L5, also known as UPL5. Now, if you recall from our conversation in lumbar counter strain, I told you that there wasn't really any posterior lumbar counter strain tender points that you needed to know. And I'm going to say that I told you a little bit of a white lie. If you look at this chart, you'll notice that we're going to be talking about some posterior pelvic slash sacral tender points that have a lumbar number in them. So as you see here, upper pole L5. But for the purposes of COMLEX and in-class exams, these tender points are categorized as pelvic and sacral more than they are as lumbar. And you'll understand why in just a second. So upper pole L5 or UPL5 is located on the superior medial aspect of the PSIS. The treatment position is just pure extension. So we're looking at the superior medial aspect of the PSIS, and you can see UPL5 depicted here in the color red. Again, treatment position is pure extension. Our next tender point, similarly named but not to be confused, is the lower pole L5. So we just talked about upper pole L5, now we're talking about lower pole L5. This is also known as LPL5. This is located somewhat in the same region as the one we just talked about, but this is on the inferior aspect of the PSIS. Treatment position here is flexion, a deduction, internal rotation. So I'm showing you on the diagram here in blue where LPL5 is located. Again, we are right around that PSIS, but now we're on the inferior aspect of it. Whereas when we were talking about UPL5, we're on the superior medial aspect of the PSIS. So these tender points are close together. They're named similarly, but do not get confused. That's the LPL5. Our next tender point is the PL3 gluteus tender point. You might see this written as just PL3. You might see this written as gluteus uh, tender point or gluteus medius PL3. It's referring to the same tender point. This is located two thirds of the way between the PSIS and the tensor fascia lata. Treatment position here is extension, abduction, external rotation, or E-A-B-E-R. Now, if we go to our diagram, it would be prudent for me to point out that when we talk about the distance between the PSIS and the tensor fascia lata, we're talking about the, the imaginary area where the tensor fascia lata would insert. Because on this diagram, I have not depicted for you the tensor fascia lata like I did the piriformis. So if we go about two thirds of the way between the PSIS and the lateral part of the posterior aspect of our pelvic region, that's where PL3 gluteus will be located. And the tensor fascia lata, had I drawn it on this image, would be inserting just lateral of that PL3 tender point. So that's shown in green and that's your PL3 gluteus tender point. Our fifth and final posterior pelvic sacral tender point is the PL4 gluteus. Now, sometimes you'll see this written as PL4. Sometimes you'll see this written as gluteus medius um, PL4 or gluteus medius 4. It's all referring to the same tender point. This is located on the posterior aspect of the tensor fascia lata. So again, I'm not showing you in the diagram where the tensor fascia lata is actually located because I think it would disrupt the image I'm trying to show you overall. But that tensor fascia lata will originate lateral on the posterior aspect of the pelvic region and then kind of run downward towards the femur. And on the posterior aspect of that tensor fascia lata, as it approximates the femur, that's where PL4 gluteus medius tender point, which is shown here in pink, will be located. Um, and the treatment position for the PL4 gluteus is extension, abduction, external rotation. So the treatment positions between PL3 gluteus and PL4 gluteus are 
they're identical. So they're named similarly and the treatment is the same. So if you can get a, a crafty mnemonic, it's actually easy to memorize both. So my mnemonic for those tender points um, is 3-4 E-A burr. Kind of rhymes if you say it in a, in a funky way, but 3-4 E-A burr. 3-4 E-A burr. And that reminds me, 3-4, of course, referring to PL3 and PL4, and E-A burr reminding me of the treatment position, extension, abduction, external rotation. So that concludes this video as well as the entire section on counter strain. Remember, the most important things for you to know are the tender points, their location, and their treatment position.